Yo, I'm Justin Tuck, and I want to welcome you to the New York Giant All In Podcast, D Line Edition. And I have some good friends of mine that's joining us today. Uh, I'm sure you all know them. Um, to my left, immediate left, we have O.C. Yumanyora, mm. the London Prince. Mm -hmm. On the screen, we have Jason Pierre Paul. <laughs> <laughs> And directly in front of me, we have Matthias Kiwanuka. Let's just jump right into it, man. What made this group special? I'll start with you, Osa. You're the oldest by far. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. Uh, my Nigerian age says I'm a lot younger. <laughs> and I actually, <laughs> I might be approaching 50 right now, yeah, to be you're honest. Nobody, you're knows. Uh, nobody knows. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're African hey, too. Hey, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we talking about you right now. Um, I don't know. I think it's number one. We all we were all some very good players. Number one, and then on top of that, the competition was intense, um, and we just knew that we had a bunch of very good players. And you know, they say iron sharpens sharpens iron. I, I believe that's the truth. Mm. I think the fact that we had so many good people, so many good natured people, so many great talented football players. I think putting all those people in the room together it could have it could have went left really quick but um <laughs> uh for some reason we just found a way to make it work and you know we were all rooting for each other we we're happy for each other all those type of things i think you know enabled us to bring the best out of each other and um made us a special group anything to add on that jp for me what made the guy what made that group the, or our group so special man was was the guys in the room you know what I mean? We knew that it started with us. And each game that we went into, no matter what, we already knew we was in the trenches. We was in the doghouse. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, everybody could talk to each other. You know, I had no problem coming to um, OC. Had no problem coming to Tuck. Definitely had no problem coming to Kiwi, even though I sat right next to him. You know, I ain't know, I, I ain't know nothing. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get it today. But that's what made it special, man. Like, the guys that was in the room, man. You got Tuck. You like... Kiwi, you got Chris Canty, you got Rocky, mm -hmm. but all those guys that are not, not here right now made it that much special. And then we went to the trenches together, man, that run that we had, can't nobody beat us. You know what I'm saying? And we shared a true brotherhood. That's what made it special for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kiwi? Yeah, I think it was a lot had to do with the character of the people in the room. And I, I'll say that to you guys individually. Like, this is a very high character group. And when I say that, it means that people were able to put their pride aside yeah. and help another man, even though they knew that that might take away from their, their spin, take away from their shine a little bit. But we did it in order to advance the, you know, the, the objective of the group and get everybody on the same page. So um, I learned a lot from you old, old, old guys. <laughs> I learned a lot from, from the young guys. And, you know, at that time, I was going back and forth between two different rooms. So I got to see a little bit of a different perspective there, too. Being in a linebacker room and being in a D-line room, there's, there's nothing like being in that D-line room. Yeah. Like, I love being in a linebacker room. Don't get me wrong. Like, those are my boys, too. But, like, when you come in that, in that room, it was, it was fun. It was jokes. But it was hard work. You know, and there was competition to a level that I had, I had never experienced before, and I, I enjoyed that. We was just a loose group, mm -hmm. right? I mean, obviously, you know, we had a, a, a great mix of older players and, uh, <laughs> and younger players. And, that, you know, kind of, <laughs> you're going to get a chance to keep back in a minute. And, and people right in the mix, right, of all different backgrounds. So think about the room mm -hmm. we had from the perspective of, you know, JPP from, from, from Haiti, you two from mm -hmm. Africa. You know, I'm from this small town in Alabama. And then we had kid guys that, we had Ivy League kids. I call them kids. We had mm -hmm. Ivy League players. We had people from all different walks of life. When you think about the melting pot that was that room, uh -huh. you think about that, then you think about the fact that, yeah, we all were really, really good at what we did. Mm. Everybody was individually confident in their abilities mm. of their own. You uh -huh. know what I mean? Like, you had your move, you had your move, you had your move. Like, everybody had their go-to move that they would do on the field, but at the same time, like, we're always in there learning from each other. Like, I was like, hey, what, 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 how did, what, what was that thing you just did right yeah, there? Yeah. Where you, did, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, we were pushing each other because we were a little, little arrogant, you know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying, in ourselves. <laughs> So like, like when you walk in that door after you had your couple sacks in that game, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't, couldn't nobody tell you nothing. You know, you walk in there like, like that, and everybody was looking for that feeling every week. Let me get into something, because I know, JP, congratulations, first off, man. You, you just became a part of the, the two-ring club. Congratulations, mm -hmm. my brother. 
me, Osa, and Kiwi had been there a while. We had kind of cemented ourselves as far as what we were for the New York Giants. This guy comes in, and like, let's, let's be honest. Mm. We, we, it was no film on JPP. We, we, they drafted him early. He did some backflips. He did some backflips. We were like, <laughs> okay, he's athletic. He backflips back back like, into know, the league. This is Jason Pierre-Paul. They named JPP doing the actual backflips on sports science. Go! Stop! Woo! Oh, that was amazing. We had been kind of established. We had been a part of that first Super Bowl run. We had played with Michael and so on and so forth. JPP comes in, and obviously you see the talent level. Mm -hmm. You see how, you know, just, just looking at the measurements, long arms, long legs. Jason's a foot taller and twice as heavy. His 81-inch wingspan is huge. JPP would be the first one to tell you, he knew nothing about playing football. Mm. What he did know about was give 100% effort. But like, let's just dive into this season that JPP had, right? Mm -hmm. If you think about the fact that for what he was as a rookie, mm -hmm. raw talent, and you see the promise there, what did you see from JPP when he first got there compared to what he put on tape that Super Bowl year? That season that JPP had, I don't think I've seen a person perform on that level the entire year. Week in, week out. I I'd never yeah, seen yeah. it before. I'd never seen it before. Yeah. Grossman in trouble and down he goes. And that's the new fan favorite, Jason Pierre Paul. Straight back to Logan Sack, back of the 16 yard line by Jason Pierre Paul. Wow. It was so fast I could barely say it. This kid comes to play. Let's go! Let's go, baby! That level of dominance, like sheer dominance, we play with Strahan. Yeah. And I, I had just never seen that before. He put the defensive line in his, you were injured quite a bit right, that year. I was 100%. injured quite a bit that year. You know, there was a lot of things going on and he just, he was the one key throughout. It, it, it was incredible. Just the ability to take over games, the way he was playing, the way he was constantly, it, it was like he was in a different, he was, in a different, he was in a different, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was just different. And I got to tell you a funny story. I haven't even told Jason this. I've never told anybody this before. But that year, I was actually holding out <laughs> <laughs> for, about, for about three days. No, 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 hold on now, hold on. So, <laughs> I, I, remember this. I remember this. So, I'm holding out, and, um, you know, I had surgery on my knee, and I could have came back a lot quicker, right? <laughs> But I'm, I'm having, you know, I'm, I'm in a situation with, with, with the team. First week, I'm, I'm watching and oh my God. I'm looking, I, I see JP go off. I said, wow. <laughs> right. That knee that right. that that started feeling yeah. good. No, no, but I was like, good man, job, good job. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Second week, he goes off again. I said, oh, oh. man. <laughs> <laughs> That third week he bought, I said, oh, man, hey, listen, I, got, I, I cut my hold out short, man, because yeah. I knew. Oh, yeah. my you know God. what I mean? Yeah. The whole thing was like, at that point, it was like, you know, we knew we had really good players, mm -hmm. right? Everybody, he was good, he was good, like I was good. But then he had pushed it to a level that was mm -hmm. so dominant that I knew, I was like, I, this can't continue. I can't win. <laughs> yeah. you, you understand yeah. what I mean? So I got to come, come back out and play. Yeah. And um, it, it was just just a fantastic performance individually. JPP, let me just ask you, like, you know, what were you thinking going into that year? I ain't know what was going on. <laughs> uh, one week, one week they come and say, "Hey, hold on, who was out first? Tuck, I think you went out first. Well, Osa was, was out, out and then I, 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 uh, I didn't play in the Washington game. Yep. Yeah. Yes, he was out with an ankle injury, and I remember you went to, uh, you went overseas. Mm -hmm. I remember that, mm -hmm. and then. I played for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, me and Kiwi subbed in, and then I started taking the role. And then next thing you know, uh, you come back. And they they, they, they they bring me in the room and say, hey, you know, Coach Perry Field, he's like, hey, come and talk to you for a minute. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, uh, OC's back, you know, and Tuck's back. So we just going to roll with those two, you know. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm, whatever you want me to do. <laughs> okay, I don't mm -hmm. even know about football. You know me. <laughs> next thing you know. I think uh, you got hurt. Yep, yep. I had throwing issues, shoulder, foot, knee, torn ligaments in my hand. But when when I did the neck, it takes away a little bit of the edge. 
And then next, you know, uh, they put me in. I went off. Like you were saying, explaining the whole story. Mm -hmm. I went off. It was about, probably game four, game five. I don't know what week it was. And, and then that's, you know, I don't know what happened, but then they started leaving me in that bit. Be honest, bro. Like, I ain't know too much about the Super Bowl either. Like, I ain't know, I was raw, a raw player. I ain't know nothing about football or nothing like that. But I know, I'll tell you one thing though. Like I said, y'all boys kept me in the loop. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And then even to this day, I use it, I use it, I use the same method as when we was together. Ain't nothing changed. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get back to one game I know everybody wants to talk about. You know, we we had got to ourselves in a predicament where we literally had to win, I think, I think the last three games of the season, mm. I think. And the first one happened to be Dallas, down in Dallas. The Giants and Cowboys engaged in a dogfight with two head-to-head -head meetings to go. Obviously, it's a big rival game, Dallas versus New York. We're down there. We had all said how we hate the Cowboys and mm. so on and so forth. What, what, what do you remember about that game? The energy. You feel me? Everybody' energy was on a hundred. I just knew if I go hard, extra hard, then we at least got a chance. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no prep. I ain't prep nothing. You know what I'm saying? I just see ball, go get ball. <laughs> see ball, get ball. <laughs> Spot on. Jason Pierre Paul, relentless effort there. In a game with nearly a thousand yards of offense, JPP dominated with a safety, a forced fumble eight tackles, and two sacks. Beating the double teams. You're in his head, all right? See the replay, you're in his head. Let's go. You're going against one of the best, the pre, one of the premier left tackles in the league, a must-win game. That's, that's the things that you want to always do show up and be your best on and that mm -hmm. night you was your best and we don't win that game without you there, there ain't no ain't no need of me i'll tell you what that, that block you. kick boy yeah we were, going, <laughs> we were going down so next thing you know i was like you know what i'm gonna take my chances i'm not gonna do the assignment and i'm gonna just go over yeah, mm -hmm. and then throw it up. i went over and it's like a little crease i just put my hand up and that was a block and then you know i had to say i did that <laughs> <laughs> What's your best block play? You got somebody that can rise up, make the play? It's called individual effort. Snap is good again. Kick on its way, and it's blocked! Blocked by the Giants! And it bounds into the end zone, and the Giants will win it! And the New York Giants have saved their season! Individual rose up. Is it Jason Pierre-Paul? He's done everything else tonight. There he is. Yep, Jason Pierre-Paul, JPP. Jason Pierre-Paul, if you're not in the Pro Bowl this year, there should be an investigation based on one game alone. Well, JPP, man, listen, I, I know you got to run. I know you, you're still doing the things that we, we were doing years, years ago. So listen, man, I know that, you know, obviously it was a pleasure playing with you. It's a pleasure watching you too, because I, I mean, like every time you get a sack, I feel like I got a piece of that. <laughs> Whether it's true or not, I feel like I feel like I, I got like half of that sack, man. I taught him that something. So man, listen, keep doing what you're doing, man. Good luck, stay healthy. I can truly say, man, winning the Super Bowl with your brothers is everything. And that's the feeling that you will always have. If it wasn't even because of that Super Bowl, we wouldn't even be having this talk right now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. each of y'all individual on the cell phone and kick it and still, you know, chop it up. But this right here, you can never forget this moment, bro. You feel me? Because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll always be there no matter what. So, y'all boys do y'all thing. Hit my cell phone up, bro. I'm, hey, uh, I'm talking. Talking. <laughs> man, answer the phone when we call you too, man. I always do. He does. He always does. He, does. he always does. That was just me saying yeah. that on, on camera. <laughs> Peace. Now, I know, you know, everyone knows the Dallas game. Dallas game was a JPP game. Mm. But then, you know, we come here, and the Jets, um, Rex Ryan had kind of put carpet over our, our, our Super Bowl uh, trophies. David Dill, you know, is, is, you know, going through the locker room, cussing people out because, you know, he didn't think we were mad enough. I know, Osi, you kind of missed that because you had a little injury there. You come back later. But, like, 
you know, Kiwi, what do you remember from that whole week of the Jets? You know, just the lead up to it. I just I remember the the sentiment from from that time in the in the season and having all the veteran players who would come in from other teams and having these meetings, having these player only meetings, and having these these <laughs> these real yeah. these real discussions. And for people like Antrell, people coming up, standing up, saying like, I didn't come here for this. Shit. Mm. Like we had too much talent on this team. We had too much talent in this locker room to not be living up to our potential. Let's go out here and be great, man. Let's go out here and hit. Let's go out here and stick. Let's go out here and bust it. We had to gut check ourselves. And I, I specifically remember like when Antrell and those other guys like Dion and them, like when they were pulling us and saying like, you guys don't understand what we got here. Like you said, we were taking it for granted a little bit. That's where, that's where it switched. When we stopped taking it for granted and we started actualizing our potential and realizing like what it is that we could do out here on this field, that's when I think um, the major shift occurred and you could see it in everybody's eyes. I feel like the sentiment for me in that time period was just like, it wasn't over. Like we still had a whole lot left in the tank. We had a lot to prove, but we had to go out there and do it. But once the ball would start rolling, once one person would make a play, then another person would make a play, that was all it ever really took. And that's what I think our mentality switched to and like, you know, obviously Jets game, we're going to do that. Victor Cruz, the 99 yard uh, touchdown pass. Manning back to throw. Throws one to the right, completes it to the right for a first down and running out of a tackle down the right sideline is Victor Cruz. Chased by Smith, hurdles over him to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, to the five. Touchdown Giants, 99 yards. Bradshaw running over, I forget the safety's name, in, 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 in the end zone. And up Bradshaw, he's going to run right through a tackle to the 10-5 dagger shot. Touchdown Giants. Just a dominant play from the D-line as far as the pressure we put on that quarterback all day. Sanchez back, pumps under pressure, he's going to get sacked, Bumble. balls loose, they dive on it at the 39, Giants say they have it, and they do. Sanchez back in his end zone, he's under pressure, sacked. They're going to roll it to safety, and that'll just about end the game. So the Giants have won their fifth in a row against the Jets, and bragging rights. This auto! This auto! And then we got the, the familiar foe. Got Dallas coming in here. It's a Sunday night game. I don't care if you hurt. I don't care if you injured. It's obviously, there's a difference between the two. You're not missing now. Yeah. It's Sunday night. You got Tony Romo. You got that old line. You know, Dallas Cowboys. And I just remember, man... That night just felt like it was a playoff game. The crowd was crazy. All of us were super focused. We had had a great week of practice, and now it's time to go do it. Every time you walk out that tunnel in the stadium in a night game, and it's a divisional game, and it's the Cowboys, like it is an environment that is special that not a lot of people will ever have that feeling in their lifetime, mm -hmm. let alone, you know what I mean, multiple times. You know, yep. you talk about like Super Bowls here, playoff games are here, but like, you know, having a divisional opponent in the NFC East come into your stadium at night on national television, like that is a stage set for a king to shine. I'm getting and chills everybody. just listening to you talk about it. <laughs> in my mind, at that point in time, my season was over and my ankle was messed up, everything. But I was like, man, we're going into this Dallas game we have to win this particular game, right? <laughs> like, we have to win this game. Yeah. And so I, I had to make a decision at that point. I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What sacrifice am I going to make? Because I had to fly to Germany. Yep, I remember. <laughs> right? I flew to Germany um, to go see Kobe Bryant's um, doctor. Yep. And he gave me some injections. And I flew back that Wednesday practiced on Thursday, Friday, and went out there and played on Sunday, you, man. Let me ask you, how did you deal with that that mentally? Like we we've yeah. all we've all been injured before. This is something that we don't people don't always talk about a lot. Like when you're sitting there and you're watching the team, your team on yeah. TV play without you. How yeah. does that how does that affect you mentally? It was tough, man. It, it was and the only reason why I say it was tough was because I had performed at such a level that year. I had like seven sacks in seven games, in the seven games I played. Mm -hmm. So regardless, I was like, I can't miss this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can't miss this. And even though my leg was messed up and, you know, I could have conceivably sat out, I knew that I had to do everything within my power to get back out there on that field because I knew I could help. Romo takes the snap. He's back to throw. He's under pressure and he's going to get sacked back at the 15. O.C. Humanura gets it. 
After a four-game absence, O.C. gets sack number eight on the season. Um, here comes Kiwanuka. He gets away from him. Now Jason Pierre-Paul will sack Romo back at the 29. He threw it away, but he's going to be ruled down by sack at the 30-yard line. A glut of pass rushers. And he's gonna be you can up. never have they enough pass rushers. They got enough. He's he's side side side. They got enough. Romo back to throw under pressure. Rolls right now. Sack by Tuck. Fumbles the football. And the Giants have it. How's and that? that's your ball game. The New York Giants are the NFC East champions and will host the Atlanta Falcons next Sunday. Great job of finishing now. Great job of finishing this part of the season. And now we go, man. We go. We play Atlanta 1 o'clock on Sunday. Playoffs. We beat Dallas. Um, great moment. But we don't have time to celebrate. Mm. The first playoff game in MetLife Stadium history is against the Atlanta Falcons. First playoff game in MetLife Stadium. Can't get no better weather. Can't be no better team. Can't get no better teammates. All in the day. That's all we got. We ain't got nothing to say it for. If you don't put it all in the day, you're taking your ass home. And I don't want to go home. Now, as a kid, I, I consider myself a football you know, historian. I used to always watch these old films or like these playoff runs. And one thing that pops in my head about playoff games in Giant Stadium was these white towels. Mm. As a kid, I just remember that. I don't know why that happened. I don't know why it stuck out in my mind. But now we come out and those white towels are, are flaring up and the crowd is into it. They had no shot. Yeah. They didn't have a chance. Yeah. Like, I, I, I know, like, you're in the playoffs and every team is good, whatever. Atlanta had no chance. Yeah. Maybe midway through the second quarter, I was like, oh, they're, they're finished. <laughs> right, right? Like, you could feel, you could, like, yeah. feel. Yeah. You could feel it, like, just. Kind of when the game. Yeah, yeah. it just kind of, like, left them. It was, like, early. Early in that Turned game, off. I was like, these, these guys, they don't, they don't want nothing. But they don't want no part of it. I remember that one for me because that was, um. I was, as a linebacker, when you play a team that's got a fullback, it was like my job was if I wanted to pass rush, <laughs> I had to knock that fullback off the field. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So I had to come downhill and hit him. I remember a couple of times I was coming down the field hitting him, bam, and I still had like the, the neck injury and all that stuff. So I was, this was my celebration right here. I was seized up. I was like, but like, but like I was just, I was enjoying it because that meant like, this is my opportunity. I felt like I was playing linebacker so that I could get down there yeah. and put my hand in the dirt mm, with y'all. Yeah. So every time I came down the field, wham! It's like, all right, now y'all better not take me out this game. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did on base. You saw that, right? I, I, did, I did nickel, what you asked me to do. Let dime, me play ball. <laughs> these nickel and dime packages. But I did. Um, and that just leads me to one. I've, I've, I've talked about O.C. having sacks and uh, not getting dirty. But O.C. didn't get to, to, to be on the field for the fourth and one. Stops. Um, <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't get on the field for the fourth and one. It, stops. it wouldn't have been fourth and one. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> First down. Kiwi. They pay me for sacks. Yeah. And, what, exactly. What, what is this? Why, why you want? Why you want me in this four technique? No, that's not. No, no, no. That's not me. Fourth and inches. They're showing power formation. Not gonna snap it. He does go for it. He get it. He get it. He did not get it. Here comes Ryan to the line, fourth and inches. Empty backfield, Jones in motion. Ryan's gonna keep it. He got stopped, he didn't get there! Second time today, they've been stopped on fourth and inches by the big blue defense. But speaking to that, the sack you had on Ryan to pretty much pit the game, just to end the game, mm. just speak to me about that. Because yeah. again, it's one of those OC sacks. I don't think you touch the ground. Yeah. We all know OC is the pretty boy, right? The guy who got sacks. Look good, feel good, play good. <laughs> yeah. the guy got sacks. He get, OC can get four sacks in the game, and literally his jersey is absolutely spotless, right? <laughs> yeah. But that, that, I, I would say that's one of my top two favorite sacks of all time. Favorite. I, 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 like, I loved it. And the only reason why is because of how it happened. Like, I, I just came off the edge. Um, and I bull rushed the guy, which is something I do. <laughs> <laughs> I had no interest in, in doing that. But like, I, I, the I, ultimate changer. Yeah, 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 I know. The ultimate He'll never see this He will never see this coming. Never. See this coming. <laughs> never. <laughs> so, so, you guys are so funny. Man. So, yeah, no, so I bull him, and as I'm bulling him, the guy just keeps going back, and I see Matt Ryan there. And so I'm bullying the guy, and Matt Ryan is there. And so I just, I leaped over him, and I grabbed Matt Ryan, 
and the offensive lineman is still yeah. he's trying to block you. Yeah. Trying to block so, you. So disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was real. It was real. It was real. But we win that game going away. I think, I think the score is like 24 2, something mm-hmm. like that. Next, uh, we have arguably the best team in our um, division. In the league at the time. In the league, yeah. yeah, yeah. You got 15 and 1, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers, that offense. But OC, again, has this uncanny ability to having these phenomenal sacks without touching the ground. Like, again, another sack where he does not touch the ground, does not have. This is a grass field, and his jersey is clean. <laughs> Like, did he sweat? Like, what? And, like, I, I'll play this sack back in my head because I was right there by you, and I was mad because literally I'm getting ready to sack Aaron because you missed him at first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this guy does some Michael Jordan switch of hands <laughs> where it's – O.C. comes by him, he misses him, and in the air, after he misses him, he hits the ground and just taps the ball out of, your, yeah. out of his hand with his left hand. Yeah. The awareness. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, that play had to be in slow motion for you. Because, like, everything else is so fast, you, you wouldn't even, like, be able to grasp the fact that I can just do this real quick. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. Like, I saw him, and he ducked. And then I just saw I saw his hand coming back up in slow motion. I just, I just did it. But I remember the play, every, everything, it seemed like it was about 10 seconds. It really did. It seemed like it took, like, 10 seconds for that to happen. In reality, it took, like... Yeah. It was a split yeah. second. I saw it. I saw it in slow motion, and then I just knocked it out. And then, and, and so then, many um, times in it. me and Kiwi's careers, we've like, you know, thought we had sex. Almost there. You know, we. I'm. I'm literally. I think I'm tackling Aaron as you, you knock him off. You get up off the ground. You get off the ground. You're about you to celebrate. And you're looking around like. And OC's already 10 yards down the field doing this. <laughs> like, man, yeah. it was like, okay. Ain't no way, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and yeah. Now y'all wonder why we got upset with this thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fastball over the middle. Caught inside Packer territory. Nick's runs out of a tackle. He's at the 35-30. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Giants. Manning back, steps up, heaves one down the middle of the field, into the end zone, and Nix makes the catch for the touchdown. He went up with the big hands and caught it on the Hail Mary on the final play of the half. Manning back, throws back in the end zone, and it's caught by Manningham for the touchdown on the post. Hand off Jacobs, cuts back to the right. Jacobs turns the corner at the 10. He's to the 5, to the goal line, touchdown Giants. And that 14-yard run most likely has sent the Giants to San Francisco and the NFC Championship game. Now, we just came out of Green Bay. So now we get to go back out to San Francisco and play the 49ers. From high atop a rainy candlestick park in San Francisco, California, it's the NFC Championship game as the New York Giants take on the San Francisco 49ers. And I was still kind of banged up. My shoulder and my neck was still hurting. But, like, that was the game for me. More than, more than even Dallas was for me. That was kind of the game for me where I wanted to go out and, 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 and do my thing. We knew how good their defense was. We knew how good our defense was. It became a defensive battle. You think about what we were able to do to the San Francisco running game. Frank Gore ran bonkers all season, and we shut that down. We shut down Alex Smith. He'll drop back to throw. Looking for a wheel route left. He's in trouble, and he's going to get sacked by Pierre Paul. And Justin Tuck is back to throw. He sets in the pocket. He's under pressure. Sacked by Matthias Kiwanuka back in the 25-yard line. We had... Some, some lulls in our secondary and with Vernon Davis. Smith over center, tight eye behind him. He drops straight back to throw. He's looking for a deep ball down the right sideline, and he's got Vernon Davis. He's to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown Niners. 73 yards. Back to throw is Smith. He has time. He throws it deep down the left side for Davis, who makes the catch for the touchdown. Second of the ball game for Vernon Davis, and the Sir? Niners are back in front. Outside of those two plays, yeah. They didn't do anything against us. And if you think about that game, right, you think about Eli literally getting pummeled yeah. <laughs> all game. Yeah. Manning back to throw. He's under pressure again. And now he's going to get planted and sacked from behind by Alden Smith. And, like, anytime you get these defensive battles, it's like we knew if we just gave Eli that one moment, that mm-hmm. one something to, to get us over the ump, we felt like our offense was going to make a play before their offense did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Manning back to throw. He zips one to the left to the end zone. Touchdown, Giants. Mario Manningham. 
you know, we were playing our best ball at the right time. Everybody was contributing, right? It just seemed like every week we knew that we can count on 11 guys being in the right place and doing the right things. And when you think about a playoff run, a Super Bowl run, normally that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Weatherford takes the snap. Boots one, returnable for Williams from his own 20. Lost the ball, and the Giants say they have it, and they do! Williams coughed it up on the return, and the Giants have recovered it. Knocked out by Jaquan Williams and recovered by the Giants. Devin Thomas recovered it, but the rookie Jaquan Williams punched it out. Field goal! Field goal! Lawrence Tynes hit a 47-yarder in Lambeau Field four years ago to send the Giants to the Super Bowl. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Everybody set. Snap is low. Kick on its way. It's got the distance, and it is gone. And Lawrence Tynes has done it again. He's kicked the Giants to the second Super Bowl in four years. <laughs> We're going to do a bowl. We're going to do a bowl. I'm so proud of these players and these coaches. You know, nobody gave us a chance after we lost four games in a row in the middle of the season. We didn't write ourselves off. This is for all the Giants, all of our fans, and we are thrilled to be going to Indy. Congratulations, Giants. We're going to the big one again. Yeah! One, two, three, two. When I think back on that game, that was probably the most brutal. Yeah, it was physical. There, there was I'd never I'd never been in a in a situation quite like that before. That no, I hadn't. I, I'd never been in. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was, that was a physical game. <laughs> they wanted to win that game bad. Exactly. They wanted to win that game yeah. bad. Yeah. And Wonderful. when I left that game, I I didn't want no parts of San Francisco again. I was like, I, I don't want no. There's there's I would have never wanted to play that, that team again. There's some teams you play them, even when you win, you're like, yo. Like, yeah. But you mean it. You're like, yo, y'all, y'all really played. Like, yeah. You, you came out, yeah. That, 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 was, that, that was the most physical, toughest game I've ever played. The physicality of that San Francisco game, luckily we win it and we get a couple of weeks to kind of re, yeah. you know, re, you know, get our bodies right and head into the Super Bowl. But I would be remiss without at least mentioning just the, the, the awesome job our coaching staff did, led mm -hmm. by Coach Coughlin. And just think about it. Every time we won a Super Bowl, it seems like he was getting fired the week before, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's just like you talk about resilience. You talk about just like he just had this personality where he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna prove you wrong." Yeah. And like he would find a way to really right our ship, right? You're gonna hear me say this a thousand times: finish, finish, finish. He instilled in us, you know, this mentality of. You know, it ain't about flash. It ain't about none of this other stuff. It ain't about the name on the back. It's about the name in the front. And it, and it wasn't about being the. He was talking about the Giants organization. He was talking about the love we had for each other, the team. Mm. Good teams become great teams when their members trust each other enough to surrender the me for the we. With Coughlin, the one thing I, I noticed immediately is that he held everybody accountable. It didn't matter like, who you were, mm -hmm. yep. how much you made, or whatever. Like there was there was no mixing words when it came down to it. There was a standard. There was an expectation for everything at all times, no mm -hmm. matter what. Here we go. Come on, man. We need the work. Let's go. Let's go. Break down. Break down. Good ball. Good ball. Be smart. Be smart. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Learn from it, learn from it. It was annoying, I ain't gonna lie, like being harped on and all that kind of stuff, but what I what I always said after that is like, I respect him. He was ironclad through and through. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that led us to be so prepared for big moments, mm -hmm. that led us to be, you know, even killed in these moments too, where we didn't get too high to the highs, didn't get too low to the lows. And when you think about that, and you think about having to play this Super Bowl, it would have been easy for us to, to 
to relish in the fact that, oh, we're seeing this team again yep. and get caught up in that media around, well, this is our opportunity to prove that 07 wasn't a fluke, right? Mm -hmm. This is our opportunity to, you know, whatever, right? But, like, that never came up, in, not in our locker room. Obviously, the outside media was trying to play that. But, like, because of that, 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 you know, that even killness and that and that and that fatherhoodness, I guess what word I'm looking for there, from Coach Coughlin and that, that that coaching staff, again, we're flying into this Super Bowl smooth sailing for yeah. us from a mental standpoint. New York Giants football is on the air from high atop Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. It's the New York Football Giants and the New England Patriots Super Bowl 46. I'm mad that y'all wanted today. I got a ring. Chris, you ain't got one. You don't know what it feel like. Rock, you ain't got one. You don't know what it feel like. Remember, you ain't got one. You don't know what it feel like. Boss, you ain't got one. You don't know what it feel like. I'm telling you right now, it's the best feeling in the world. Now, you know, obviously, the outside world is saying Brady's going to have an answer for you guys because yeah. he knows how y'all won the game in 07, right? The pass rush, the D-line being able to get to him, and so on and so forth. What do you remember from that week as far as, like, just from the, the preparation standpoint? Mm -hmm. Going into this game, I felt I felt like we were better than them. I did. Right? Well, like, you know what I mean? Like, I felt like we were the better team, and I felt like we were going to – I said, we're, we're going to win this game. Like, to me, it just, it just felt so much different than it did in, in 07. It, it, was, it was like a completely – it was like a 180-degree thing. I knew. Yeah. Like, I had so much confidence in us, all the things we had been through, and then just looking at that team, I, I felt like we were the better team. I was looking at – our matchups, our D-line versus their O-line, our linebackers versus their running backs, our secondary versus their, their team, I felt super confident. And the plus, I think for me, it was even more of on a coaching standpoint because I'd seen what Coughlin had done and his coaching staff had done. Because Belichick has always been the guy who has the master, the master, mm -hmm. you know, you know, king piece or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. He didn't have it against Coach Coughlin, so that eased my mind too. The matchup with the Patriots and us didn't call a lot for me being out on the field, especially as a linebacker. And then as a defensive lineman, I was, you know, older and whatever. I wasn't in the rotation as heavy. This was more about um, like a personal vindication, like being there with the team mm. in this moment. Because that first Super Bowl, I started up until Detroit, where one of my friends over here jumped into my ankle and snapped it. I just had my fourth surgery on that one last November. Ooh. We're good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was injured, and that was part of the reason I was asking you about the the mindset of being injured and coming back mm. because that was this was a whole like couple of years worth of, of you know coming back full circle for me. I missed that first Super Bowl, so we didn't I didn't feel like I was part of it when I got to Indianapolis, where I'm from. I felt finally like I could put this chapter of my life away. Like mm. I had made it to the Super Bowl, I had physically stepped on the field, I had played, and I. Had, helped uh, my team accomplish a goal, so I was grateful for that. Mm. Brady's back, Brady's under pressure, Brady's chased, Brady heaves one, down the middle of the field into the end zone, a jump ball, and it's incomplete, and the ball game's over, and the Giants have won Super Bowl 46. And when we win this thing, right, you, you know, the, our famous thing was, you know, I think uh, Andre Brown did, I got a ring, and, and for all of us <laughs> who had two, it was like, we got two. I got a ring. I got Speak real quickly about what it meant to bring that second Super Bowl to New York City, the parade, the, 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 just the love that we got from the city, and what that's meant from you, even now, we're 10 years out. What does that mean to you now? Obviously then in that moment, but now as well. Nothing like it, you know. Um, the first parade I missed, um, but this one was, was special, seeing all those people. Um, and, and they just, nobody, Nobody who experienced it ever forgets it. You know, even the people around, the people watching, you're just a champion. And that, that's just, that's mm -hmm. just what it is. Mm -hmm. There's something about going through all those experiences. And I think we talk about what bonds you together. Like we got to see everybody's reaction to certain circumstances. We've all been hurt. We've mm -hmm. all walked past that teammate who was injured on that table and seen how they got up off that table a few weeks later and came back and played and performed. So being a part of that is extremely special to me. It's something that not everybody in the world experiences in their lifetime, you know? So um, definitely grateful for it. We'll forever be grateful and it's a big part of my life.
Well, I think that's a wrap. <laughs> I think we've, we've, we've covered just about everything we've we wanted to cover, man. We, we've walked you through our, our season. We've walked you through the Super Bowl. And it's just always good to come back and just reminisce with these guys. These are brothers for life. And I appreciate everyone for tuning in. I hope you've learned something different about us, something you didn't already know. Um, but this is just how it was. This D-line was special. And it was special because the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. O.C.U. Muir, thank you. Matthias Kiwanuka, thank you. El and, uh, Capitan. Hey. <laughs> they don't know like that. They don't know like that. God bless. Go Giants. <laughs>